set. There's a kangaroo now right out the edge there about to jump over the fence. That's what they're barking at. I knew they were, they were going off, they were going nuts. <laughs> Anyway, welcome back everybody. Another glorious day here at Tom's Brook. Uh, George, obviously not here this morning. He worked until 10 o'clock last night. So we're gonna start up our shifts now. He'll come out at about 9.30, 10 o'clock this morning. And he's gonna work through to 12 o'clock tonight. So myself and dad will be running Bandit in the mornings. So I'm gonna jump in. I need to start it up, get the fans cranking. We need to do a seed check. And once we've done that, then we can uh, we can crack into some seeding. Tracks are starting to get some wear on them. Yeah, they're getting rid of all those, I oh, like these things, all the, the, the tags. They're all, all gone. Uh, we need to just check. We need to make sure that she's running straight and that's just checking these lugs here, making sure that they're, um, they're not wearing on one side compared to the other. This track is fine. Uh, we've also been doing, well, uh, you either throw dirt or, um, we did kitty litter the other day in the tracks there. Uh, I didn't really understand why. I think it's something to do with heat. They were like these gridded up instead of flat. I, I don't know. So we've got to keep on maintaining that. But uh, the tracks, Ash did say that they get them pretty bloody good when they uh, do it in the shop. Uh, but obviously, because they're not driving them and uh, you know driving them around like we are, they can't really tell you know what it's like. But uh, those two there are fine. So I think they've done a, uh, a fairly good job. Um, yeah, no, tracks are all good. Righty-o, so uh, 161 hectares done in this paddock so far. So we're just gonna turn everything on, turn my tines on, my fans on, and uh, Drop our tines to the ground and do a seed check. It should all be good. Uh, George and we like to get our, our workers, our cedar drivers, to uh, do a seed check every hour. Um, that way you're not going for too long if you do have a block. So it's always good just to uh, yeah, just to get out and check. Gives them a chance to walk around as well if they're getting tired. So yeah. So that's down. Now we're gonna set our seed going. goes for five seconds so let's go see uh, if we've got any blocks canola is the worst for uh, doing seed checks sometimes you've got to get right on in here just so you can see when you're doing uh, wheat or barley it's really easy because well we seed wheat and barley at about 70 kilos a hectare and uh, you can see it so <laughs> Yeah, you can just do a seed check in about uh, three, two, three minutes, whereas this is, you know, closer to that five to ten. Yeah, anyway, we'll get a check to get going. So we are seeding away. Uh, Dad is in with me because he's uh, going to learn the machine and how to drive the tractor as well because in the mornings it'll be split between Dad and myself hopping on here and running it until George gets out. Uh, but I thought I'd uh, show you guys, we're coming up to a rock pile that we've removed. Um, both Henry and George said it's been amazing, all the rock poles over there, been able to just seed straight through it and spray straight through it, there's no turning anymore. George did ask if I could get rid of all the power poles. <laughs> we need the lights on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a horizon power thing. But uh, I'm just going to show you seeding through a rock pile because it's just so satisfying for us.
Right, Dad is in the hot seat. Off he goes. George will be out in about two hours time to take over. Uh, now just on, so as I'm walking over all these headlands, so we do three headlands in Canola because we're going on the angle. And uh, normally we only do two. Two's the width of the, of the sprayer and it just makes it easy. You can turn that bar in two, but when you've got three, uh, well, when we go on the angle, it obviously shortens up your run on the headlands. So we do three headlands to get her out in time. So it makes it nice and easy for the driver because you're going on an angle. Now, what we're going to do this year, uh, last year, seeding into our wheat stubble, it was um, you know, coming off like our best year ever. So we had like four and a half ton wheat and that was, uh, we couldn't actually seed our barley into our wheat stubble. So we had to go on the angle with our barley. So we're gonna go back onto our tram with our canola, which is good. So we're still, so we're gonna be going straight, which still means that we're going across the, the furrow, which means it'll still get that water and germinate. But what we're gonna do from now on, going forward, is we're gonna seed our barley on the angle instead of our canola. It still means that our canola will go, you know, on an angle to the barley stubble, so we will be able to get through it. But it eliminates two things. Um, so obviously the canola going into the barley is on an angle, so you're always going to get through that. And then if you ever have a thick wheat stubble, the barley's going on an angle in the wheat stubble. So it's always going to get through that. Uh, and keeping this in mind when moving to a new bar, if we move to a new bar, the bar could potentially be another stubble rake. Doing it that way guarantees that we're not going to get blocks. Now the second thing is, we, uh, we notice at harvest, normally when we, it's a dry year, um, when you're cutting your barley, sometimes it'll, uh, you'll cut it and it'll drop its head off just because it's, it's not all high enough, it's not thick enough, it drops off the cutter bar. So we used to use Blue Fingers little crop savers. Now this year we didn't need that and we didn't notice mi very minimal, very minimal uh, barley head loss off the cutter bar. And we only put it down to the fact that we were cutting the barley on an angle. So the barley was seeded this way and we were harvesting this way. And it just, I don't know, I think just going on an angle gave it time to get on the cutter bar and was able to get cut and swept in. So we're gonna do, we, that's, that's the plan. We're gonna do that and uh, see if that works again because minimizing barley head loss off the cutter bar is yeah, like number one. The barley can be a, an absolute pain for it. So it worked last year. So we're gonna uh, yeah, give it a go this year and see if that works. And uh, I'm hoping it does. All go this morning, so uh, George is here and uh, he's brought out Wally and they're doing a fill as you can see. I'm uh, here now with the uh, fuel trailer and filling up uh, with fuel because he's down. He's only at by 40%, he'd last the day but I'll fill him up anyway, we've got time. Uh, yeah, this morning I've been down at my house, I put a photo up, we, we ran out of water, well almost ran out of water so I bit the bullet. And we got big D's out to cut some water for us. So unfortunately it's town water, not rain water, which is horrible, but we'd rather drink something than nothing. So we've got that. So that was, uh, you know, down there dealing with that. Um, and yeah, so now what we're gonna do, once we've done all this, we need to do a calib, well, we don't need to do a calibration. I want to do a calibration, just to check, make sure our canola's still going out at the same rate. And just check this, this bin, if you guys remember back to last year, it can be an absolute nightmare. It could be perfect for the whole whole program, or it could go out after the first calibration and the first bin, and you're way out. So we're going to do that. We're also going to have Aftery here very shortly. Uh, there is taps in the bar. That's a warranty job for folding. Apparently, you don't know when they're broken uh, until the uh, the big lifting rams there bend. So yeah, they they're going to do that. So they'll be here very very shortly so we'll, yeah we're all go this morning and then George will be smack back straight into uh to seeding and look at that nice open country he's gonna have an absolute dream seeding that today I should probably stop that that's nearly 14 kilos in the back Oh, it's time for some calibrating. Again, we're just checking to make sure that it's all 
all correct. 7.65 for that. That's pretty good. That was meant to, well, that had come out at, in, oh, we need the one from the back. That one's good. Your ear's good. It was meant to be 7.5, it came out at 7.6. So that one's good. Ag flow. How many kilos reckons in that? Fifteen point three five minus one point three. Fourteen point oh five kilos. And that was meant to be thirteen point nine, so we're still good on that type of canola. That's the first time that's ever happened that they've been bang on. It's telling me to adjust them, but I'm not going, to. I'm gonna leave it where it is, because if I adjust it then I gotta recalibrate it and check it. So I'm gonna leave it where it is because that was perfect for me. Now to do our canola and see what this one's like. Yep, you can close up the front and the back bin. Alright, so our canola is 4.3 kilos. Ooh. This one is not good. So, what did I just say? 4.3. 4.3. Oh no. Alright, so we're recalibrating the canola. We uh, had to turn everything off while uh, Africa was here fixing the, um, what's it called? The taps there. And I asked George to turn the tractor off and I didn't even think about it. I was entering it into my phone and then he turned it off before I could enter it and sort it out. So we're gonna recal it. We'll see where it's at. So well, it's about an hour ago that that was for, for me. I think we're 500 grams out. So we'll see what we are this time and keep on, uh, keep on going till we get it right and then send George on his way, finally get started. And that came out at 5.95. So that is going heavy. All right, so that was 16.7% out. So we've changed it. You got a bucket? Yeah. And off we go. Oh, this is meant to be 5.4. Eight. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's terrible. Did you wait for it? What, so it was zero, zero, zero? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Six point eight. No, no. I shall zero. Six point eight on the dot. That's five. 5.5. 5. Uh, yeah. 5.5. 5. 5. Yep, we're good. We are away, George. You can get going. Rightio, so that's why we calibrate, just to make sure. Uh, it's better that it was going higher than low. Uh, but yeah, no, we just keep an eye on it, keep calibrating it, just to make sure. It's nice and easy to calibrate, so it's all right. So as you can see, the time's going down. We're just about to do a seed check, and then George will get roaring. Um, it's taken us a lot longer this morning, but just due to the uh, the mechanic having to have the tractor off, it's just what we had to do. So we'll do this and send George on his way. All right, so uh, we've got that all full, ready to roll. Henry's gone and graded every single road on the farm, so we've got nice smooth roads now. Uh, we've got the U tower. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But uh, we've got a hydraulic leak on Louis, which isn't ideal. So we're just. Dad's going to lift up a bucket of your ear. We're going to see, see how bad it is. So in there, there's a weep on the weld. It's cracked. So I think we're going to just leave it and have to deal with that at the end of the season. Hopefully it doesn't make it any, it doesn't get any worse. But 
yeah, not ideal. Right, so we've got the spreader out because we need to convert it into my spreading. So we need to take this off, take this off, put the other disc on, put the other catcher on, which is that arm, well, oh, there's a box that goes there. The catcher comes around. And then up in here, because you got such a low rate, uh, we put the, um, the mouse bait cover on there. So it comes out in two small lines and uh, goes to each arm. Uh, so yeah, we need to spread, spread for mice because we've got quite a lot of mice activity out there. And if we do end up getting a hold of some baits uh, for slaters and things like that, we need to make sure the mice have been baited for first, otherwise they eat the baits before any bugs can. So that is the plan. They're all done, nice and simple. So that's the box I was talking about with the arm and it just falls on there and gets spread out. Now this is the, the mouse bait kit, I guess you call it. Uh, so you can see we've got two triangles there and that's how we uh, slow our rate down because we've only got one kilo a hectare. Um, so yeah, we're gonna chuck that up there on the door. Alrighty, that's on there. Then we'll just bring our door. Oh all the way down so there's a whole cal calibrating process that I need to go through to uh, get this whole thing to work because you got such a slow low rate the scales don't work and uh, it doesn't auto calibrate like like normal so we'll have to do that when it comes time which uh, the bag of uh, seed comes in 500 kilo bags I well, seed, not seed what's it called baits a 500 kilo bags, so it's 500 hectares, one kilo a hectare. So we've got to wait until George has done at least 500 hectares before we can get going. Uh, otherwise, we'll bury the seed when the seeder comes to it. So, um, yeah, at least it's ready to roll. Last job of the day. Henry's uh, in front with Ben. We're just dropping it out here so that uh, George has got a vehicle to get home in tonight. Dad's drawing the short straw. He is going to be doing the first fill, or well, the fill tonight. So he's going to fill at six o'clock. And then that should hopefully get George to go till about 12. And uh, then tomorrow morning, myself or dad will jump on the uh, tractor. And uh, yeah, we'll start the process all over again. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, we shall catch you in the next one.